Yeah. F them. Yeah. I'm <laughs> obviously only kidding. Oh, what? Are you recording now? You, you, why didn't you record that? that was... I was trying. Uh, you... I so was what's trying. the question again? Well, he was doing all this nonsense, and I forgot. Or, I mean, I didn't get on camera. Anyway, the question is, what do you do after having a spiritual awakening when you no longer resonate with certain members of your family and friends? How do you navigate that process after having an awakening? Can I, can I respond the way I responded? Just a yeah. Last thing. Yeah. F them. Yeah. I'm obviously only kidding. It's one of the hardest things, I think, honestly, that somebody has to go through when they're going through this process. Because number one, the first thing they have to get over as someone going through this process is, am I crazy? Right? So very good point. That usually takes a little time to settle in, maybe, I don't know, a couple of days to 20 years. <laughs> right. right. So right. wherever you are in that one, yeah, you've so got true. to ask the point or the question of, am I crazy? Then you're, you're, you're making headway. So yeah. you're not crazy. What you are doing is you're receiving more and more and more information uh, that you can't as an ego as being in the human suit. How to handle that, how to handle, you know, friends, family, you have to understand that they were drawn to you in the first place by your humanness, not your spiritual, what? Enlightenmentness. <laughs> Enlightenmentness? <laughs> Sounds like a meniscus. They were drawn to you as you being a human being instead of a being being, being human, human, right? Mm -hmm. That's what they were drawn to. You drew them in being your ego. So I think when the first thing you need to do is more learning, learn more about who you really are. We say it all the time, who you really are. Well, what the hell does that mean? Well, it means that we have been taught to be this person, this ego. You know, I am Scott, I am a carpenter, I am a business owner. I have a wife, I have, you know, five kids, I, ha I live in, you know, fill in the blanks, right? They're all the, dic the, the dictation of who Scott is. Who you really are is consciousness underneath. You're not this ego, you are the universe. You are a piece of the universe, just like a cell in a body. The cell doesn't live and die by itself. The cell interacts with all these other cells that create one, mm -hmm. a body. I think the more that you start to understand that, that's when the family and friends, they either fall away or they fall in. They fall into your understanding and sometimes they fall away from your understanding because they can't be where you are now. They can't they can't reach the frequency that you are now because you are more light. If they are darkness, it's too uncomfortable to mm -hmm. be in your presence. Mm -hmm. It's too uncomfortable to be near you because it's, it, it's too high energy for mm -hmm. them. It's too much light for them. It's like you've been sitting inside all day and you go outside and mm -hmm. the sun's shining. You, you can't stare at the sun. Your, your pupils can't take it yet same situation so family and friends are going to fall away only because you are changing and and it is it, it's actually a great thing doesn't feel good doesn't feel good when your partner your your wife or your your husband isn't you know on the same frequency as you but you have a choice do you not be who you really are do you not do you shy away from the light? Do you go and hide in the, hide in the darkness again with them? Mm. Or do you step into the light that you are? Because if you hide and you go back with them, you will never be happy. Mm -hmm. You will never be free. Mm -hmm. 
you will just continue that same narrative of being in the darkness until the point where that's when disease comes in. That's where that you, you just, you die in the darkness. So you really have to, you, it's a choice. You have to make the choice and you have to choose you first. And it may sound very selfish, but you know, I always love what Abraham Hicks would say, selfishness isn't doing for yourself. Selfishness is expecting somebody else to do for them, for you to do for them. That's what selfishness is. I need you to do this for me. That's selfishness. For you to say, listen, I got to be me. I got to do me. I got to go this way. I got to get into the light. You can join me if you want, but I'm going to find my happiness. That's not selfishness. Mm -hmm. That That's living. Yeah. And if we all just did that, we could all rise up together. But you have to understand some people are too dense to rise. They're, they're too much in the darkness to rise. And that's their choice. They can move out of it. And if it's not in this lifetime, maybe it's in the next one. But that's not your decision. That's not your responsibility. Your responsibility is to bring light to this place. Because the more you make them uncomfortable, the more you're going to force them out into the light. Mm. So, Allah, Adida. <laughs> That was a long answer to a very no, short that, question. No, that was a it was a really great answer. I think, you know, letting people know that, you know, you're definitely not alone if you're experiencing this right now because I think it's sort oh, of a rite of passage. Everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. When you start to begin to wake up and start to really see things differently, then... So, what, all right, so let me, let me ask another question and I'll answer the same question, right? So... You know, you, you, we always hear this, you know, oh, they're woke or, you know, the awakening. He's going through an awakening or the earth is awakening. It's just more light is coming in. We're moving out of the shadow. And what's darkness? Darkness is disease. Darkness is unhappiness. Darkness is fear, shame, fear and guilt. shame and doubt. Those lower, lower, lower vibrations. We're bringing light to this place and it's lighting all that all that shadow up and it's either you go with the light go into the light and learn to raise your fre frequency so you can accept the light or you go and hide even more you go down into the darkness even more because the the world around you so many people are awakening they're just in the light it's like you know you go to florida you're in the sunshine Man, I was in Florida. I spent a week in Florida. It was unbelievable. But I'll tell you what, the first day I got burnt to shit, right? That's what awakening is. You come out to this light and then all of a sudden you're like lit up and you're like, oh my God, it feels amazing. But if you're in it too long, you will burn because your body is learning to acquiesce to that energy. So you have to do it little by little by little. By doing that, you can take more and more and more light. Because once we were in Florida and we lived there for a while, we didn't need sunscreen. We didn't get sunburned. Because we, we, we what's the word to that? Acclimated. Acclimated. We acclimated to the climate. The climate on Earth, the climate on this planet that we call our planet is, it is getting more light. And when it becomes more light, more people are gonna be in the darkness because they don't want to change. Dolores Cannon would talk about this all the time, where the earth would split. The, one, the, the ones that would become conscious and the ones that would remain unconscious. They would be split into these two earths. It doesn't mean that there's two separate earths. There's just two different... Consciousness Consciousness. Yeah. Consciousnesses. Yeah. Again, you're welcome. I would say, for me, waking up, quote unquote, or an awakening is sort of, I, for me, the best way to describe it is like actually waking up from a dream. Like you're like, yeah. oh, whoa, okay, I've been asleep this whole time yeah. and I didn't even know I was asleep. Yeah. I was in a dream that I didn't even know I was in a dream yeah. um, and now I'm coming out. And like Scott said, I think the most important thing is that you can't expect anybody else to come, in, come out of that dream that's not on their own yeah. timing. Yeah. Um, because just because you have experienced this doesn't mean it's time for them to. So 
And maybe that's part of the waking up is to decide. Mm -hmm. I've always believed that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why I was able to create that change. Mm -hmm. I was be, I was able to remove myself from the ego to look at the whole situation from overhead mm -hmm. and to say, in order to, for me to be the person I want to become, I need to be over here. Yeah. Because yep. that's where it's calling me. And yeah. I listened. Yeah. I listened. I think what happens is we get so stuck in our humanness, we don't listen. Yeah. Because, and because there's nothing to listen to. Mm -hmm. We've blocked it off. Mm -hmm. And remembering who you are, you just opened up that channel to where you can hear it now. And there's that voice that makes it uncomfortable that's calling you. It's calling you to come. But the more and more and more that you you know, you refute it, the more that you say, no, I can't do that, the harder it's going to pull you. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of getting, it's like you're getting pulled between two horses. Mm -hmm. If you don't let go of one rope and go with the, the horse that's more powerful, you're just going to get ripped in half. So who wants to get ripped in half? That sounds painful and bloody. <laughs> you have to trust this thing that you cannot hear you cannot see, but you can feel it. You have to trust it because that is who you really are. You are that calling. And it's trying to show you who, that you aren't just this body, this, you know, Meat suit. flesh and blood. You, you're more than that. It's, you experience things. You experience color and taste and texture through the suit that you occupy. That doesn't define you. That's not who you are. You are the thing that is in it. Woo! Woo! Yeah. On that note. How's that? Well, hopefully helpful. You let us know, people. Was that helpful to or you? Or was that just the ramblings of a madman? Both. Also, what questions do you have? Let us know in the comments. What are you currently struggling with on your journey? Or what challenges have you found as you grow more spiritually, as you let more light in, what challenges are you finding in your life that maybe you want some guidance on how to work through? Let us know, people. We'll see you next week.